The year is 2011. Then 1L Robin Seelbach is performing Put Me in Coats, a folksy sea shanty poking fun at the dim-witted denizens of the deep, known as Coatsmen, at the 2011 Law Review. In an inspired turn, Seelbach, in the song's rousing chorus, shouts, Oh, put me in coats. I need a quick A today. Put me in coats. You know, coats A is a higher C or a B dot 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 in ACOC. Good one, bro. Lighthearted fun the whole family can enjoy. But what the audience failed to realize is that Seelbach's tune is part of a centuries-old tradition, denigrating and defaming those poor law students doomed to be part of Coates. A centuries-old tradition known only as Coates Face. Law Review presents Coates Face, a slightly true story. Coates Face is a multi-discipline art form, mixing song, dance, comedy, and theater. Coates Face first emerged as an art form in 1857. The first Coates Face performers were crude performers, who specialized in short, lowbrow comedic pieces. One of the more famous Coates Face performers of the era was Margaret Daniels. Teacher, teacher, what's premeditation and deliverance? Who <laughs> Margaret Daniels' favorite character to play? Jim Bob Jims, a hapless coatsman whose hobbies include fornicating with his real peaches, Russell Ratlin, Rattle Rislin, and Evolution. My name is Jim Bob, and I'm from Coats, and I think that women should have the right to vote. Margaret Daniels, Jim Bob Jim's character, would spurn a legion of copycats, characters who have since become iconic in American history. Fee simple? More like Fee can't understand it. Coates Face began to draw national acclaim during the Roaring Twenties. During this period, Coates Face performances became more varied and more elaborate. There was poetry. Ode to being Coates, a fate I would not wish on a foe. Ode to being Coates, a scarred letter I will not show. Oh shit, it's common! And there was song, including the ever popular tune, Fart Sound. That's the sound a coachman makes when he makes love to his donkey, Coach Face. It was after World War II that Coach Face reached new heights. One of the most infamous coat face pieces of all time was Arthur Miller's Death of a Coatsman. Death of a Coatsman, a riveting play that detailed the rise and fall of Earl Seeley, the coatsman who wanted to be a, quote, choo-choo train, wowed audiences nationwide. Today, coat face lives on in the taunts, jokes, and put-downs uttered by students from Acock and Brandis. It's unknown what toll this treatment has on the average coatsman. So we decided to ask, how does the coatsman himself feel about coat space? Terrible. Limited. Like... Like, I'm always going to be held back by something. I mean, like, they 
they tease us and shit, but I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, you know, the discrimination, you know, of people from coats. I mean, I don't even think the 1Ls are really made fun of for being stupid who are in coats. And I mean, to be honest, I got bigger things to worry about. Like what? I don't know. It rhymes with schmacism. I'm sorry, I don't follow. You seem young. From an affluent background, and dare I say it, smart. Despite being from Coates, obviously. Seriously? And people from Coates are supposed to be stupid. Man, I don't even know. Why do y'all even call us Coatesmen? They're like women in Coates, too. Dumb as hell. I shouldn't have fucking done this interview.